All right, so this video is going to be about osmosis and tonicity, and this is really going to be a basics uh, video. When uh, it comes down to actually calculating tonicity, that's going to be a separate video. All right, so here are three questions that um, you should try to answer. So get your whiteboard out or your scratch paper and try to answer these three questions. What is osmosis? What is tonicity? And can you describe the following environments a cell would be in? Isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic. So pause the video, take a minute, try to answer them to the best of your ability. All right, so let's go through those questions and these big ideas. Uh, if you weren't able to answer those questions, you want to make sure you watch this video and watch this video maybe a few more times until you can answer them correctly. All right, so what is osmosis? We know osmosis is the fusion or movement of water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So here we can see it moving from where there's lots of water to the, where there's less water. So we say it's going down its concentration gradient. It does not require any energy to do so. Uh, so that means it is a form of passive transport. All right, so what is tonicity? Well, tonicity is the idea of the environment that is surrounding a cell. So if I have a beaker here, okay, a wonderful beaker that is, and I have a cell in that beaker, um, what we're talking about for tonicity is the liquid or solution that is actually surrounding the cell. So all of this stuff here is what we're talking about when we talk about um, tonicity. We're describing the environment that, that is surrounding the cell. Now let's go through, and, and there's three different ways we can describe it, either isotonic, hypertonic, or hypotonic. Okay, so let's go through those. Let's talk about isotonic first. In an isotonic solution, the water content on the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell are exactly the same. Now, you might say, oh, well, then water's not going to move. Well, that would be wrong. Water is still going to be moving. It's going to be moving at the same rate into and out of the cell. We're going to call that equilibrium. So it moves at the same rate in as it does out. Okay, so here we can see that a little bit better. We can see water moving both in and out of the cell at the same rate. So again, that is the, the solution surrounding it is called isotonic, and this process of water moving at the same rate, that's called equilibrium. All right, let's talk about hypertonic solution. Um, the word hyper actually means greater than, and what you've got going on here is that the amount of solute on the outside is greater than the inside. And what that means is that the water is actually going to move from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. Okay, now when water moves out of the cell, we call that plasmolysis or plasmolysis. So a net gain of water movement goes out of the cell. Does some still move in? Yeah, just a little bit though. The majority of it is moving out. So again, when the solution surrounding the cell is hypertonic, water moves out through a process called plasmolysis or plasmolysis. Here we can see that taking place. The cell actually physically shrinks when the water leaves it. So the solution, again, is a hypertonic solution, and water is leaving. The final one we have is hypotonic. In a hypotonic solution, uh, the word hypo means less. So water is going to be moving into these cells. Okay, Water is moving into the cells. Um, I like to say hypocyto, hypocyto. Hypo solutions make a hippo because it, the cells get really large. We have a net movement of water going into the cells. So here we can see that taking place. Hypotonic makes, um, causes the process called cytolysis, and cytolysis makes a hippo. Hypo, hippo goes through the process of cytolysis or water goes into the cell. Now for plants, this is good, right? Plants like that water to go in through cytolysis or cytolysis um, because it creates um, what's called osmotic pressure on the inside. And because plants have cell walls, cell, these plants don't, these cells don't burst and it actually helps them stand up. Now it's actually bad for animal cells. In an animal cell, if they go through cytolysis and they absorb too much water, those cells can actually explode. That's why organisms that are in like fresh water that absorb a lot of water in their cells, they have mechanisms for getting rid of that water. All right, so if you're confused on any of these concepts or you did poorly on the questions at the very start, you wanna make sure that you rewatch this video several times.